Hello, my friends. I'm Pastor Doug. You know, it's been a busy day, and I'm just glad to stop for a few minutes and to visit with you. I want to give you a quick update on my sister. Terry did really well last week with her chemo treatment, and this week is a week of rest. But I'm kind of excited. Next week is her last scheduled chemo treatment. Please keep her in your prayers. Every treatment, the surgery, all the tests have been trending in the right direction. And we are just so hopeful and thankful. Your prayers are being answered and your support is so greatly appreciated. Wesley Church is in the planning stages right now of a debt reduction campaign. You know, it's not a glamorous task, but you know, it's something that we need to take care of. The luster of the new building built back in 2006, 2007 has faded, but not the hope for why they built it. It intrigues me that after 15 years, the hope that was so great that they invested $1.8 million to that investment in their community because they wanted to reach even more of the community for Jesus. Today, that hope continues to be realized as uh, we see Wesley's preschool flourishing. This year, we have over 50 students. We see the uh, Boy Scouts and, and Cub Scouts uh, meeting every week. We have mom-to-mom -mom ministry with young mothers and children, and we see how they're forming a network and supporting one another. And we see men's breakfast continuing to reach out to the men of our community. These are just met, just a few examples of how we continue to be able to reach out into our community and to share the love of Christ and to serve and care for those within our community. You know, I also have hope for the future because of Wesley Church, both as their pastor and on a personal level. You know, I've seen the Wesley family support one another in these past two years as we've all been challenged by the COVID pandemic. It's been so neat to see how they've been there for one another. But it was personal in this past year as this church family was there for me as I lost my parents during Dee's unexpected open heart surgery and after my sister's diagnosis with pancreatic cancer. It's one thing to talk about a loving church. It's another thing to experience that love, to know you're undergirded by the prayers of the saints and to feel so many tangible expressions of tender loving care that came from our church family. That gives me hope for the future. One of my favorite scriptures says this about our hope for the future. We read in Jeremiah 29, 11, for surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. I want you to see why I love this verse. And as we stand grounded with God, we do have a future with hope. First, God has a plan. Now, I have plans, and I, I'm sorry to admit it to you, but more times than I like, those plans have failed. But you know what? If God has a plan, I know I can trust that he's got this. And it's going to all work out just as it needs to. I may not understand every turn or see how we're going to get there from where I am right now. But God's got this. And I trust him. My hope begins because I know God has a plan. It's going to work out. And not only does God have a plan, but his plan is for our welfare. As I try to look up and, and better understand this word welfare, how it was being used, other translations use, instead of welfare, they talk about God's good plans, about peace, prosperity, and well-being. Not only does he have a plan, but the plan is to, that he has going for us is to see you and I do well, for us to thrive and be at peace. As a parent, we'll try to provide these same things for a child so God provides for you and me. My friends, know that God wants us to do well and to be at peace during the process. So I has a plan and he has a plan that he wants to see us do well. And finally, God sees a future 
with hope. God sees a better tomorrow. You know, right now with the pandemic, the greater tragedy might be that we focus on the pandemic rather than on God. We need to focus on God who will see us through and beyond this terrible time to a better tomorrow. God knows the way to a future with hope. God is who we need to trust. We need to trust in him and in his word, and we will find hope and strength until we get past these terrible times and we find that better tomorrow. You know, these words were written to people in exile. It wasn't a little exile. It was going to be a 70-year exile. But Jeremiah reminds them that God will never forget them. When they seek and call upon the Lord, he will restore them. We too are a people that must look past the pandemic to God, who is our helper and strength, and who will surely give us a future with hope. My friends, I hope this short reflection today reminds all of us that we have hope for the future. We, may, we find that hope first and foremost with God. We find that our hope is in our relationships and certainly within our Wesley family. And we find that hope in our shared ministry as we seek to reach even more for Jesus. These are all the reasons we have hope for the future. Amen. Just two uh, reminders uh, about some things going on uh, with our congregation. Uh, on Monday afternoon, January 17th, from 1 to 4, I invite you to join us in the multi-purpose room for our Martin Luther King Day of Service. Uh, we'll work to complete service projects, which will support nonprofit organizations in the area. All adults, youth, and kids are welcome to come and lend a hand. The adult Sunday school class uh, is back in session. Uh, they meet via Zoom uh, every Sunday from 1045 until noon. Uh, all are welcome to attend. To participate, just give your name and email address to Jeanette in the office or Jeff Miller. They'll make sure you get a Zoom invite um, and send you the weekly study questions for the upcoming lessons. Presently, they are studying a study by Andy Stanley titled, Me and My Big Mouth. All are welcome. Please, my friends, consider joining us. Well, let's close this time with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Loving, faithful, and all-powerful God, when doubt and fears overwhelm me, help me to take my eyes off my problems and to look to you. Help me to remember that even when faced with great difficulties, I can be confident because you have plans for me. You have things under control. You can see a brighter future with hope, even if I can't. Help me trust this truth and to trust you each and every day. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for visiting with me today. We'll talk again soon. And may the peace of God be with you. Stay strong and stay safe. Bye.